There's a story in the Bible, and I'm not going to be long, I promise, but there is a story in the Bible about the, one of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. I don't know if you ever got into wrestling. I know Nick, Nick Meyer gets into wrestling pretty good. Matter of fact, his brother is called the California Kid, and he wrestles every single weekend. And I mean, if you've never seen the California Kid wrestle, it is something to behold. What'd you say? Don't waste your time. No, I've seen him wrestle. But I remember one time where uh, I was watching wrestling with my dad, and, and uh, I was young, and we were going, you know, it was Sting and, and the total package, Lex Luger, were going at, at it uh, with each other, and, and, you know, and, and they were, you know, doing their thing, and, and, I, and I was just watching it. My dad's sitting there over in his chair, and I don't know, you know, my dad, he's just was a very wise man. And he would sit over in his chair with his legs crossed like this, and he'd watch the TV just like this. Now, I find myself doing the same thing. And I'm like, my gosh, Christy's like, you are your dad made over. <laughs> but, but, but we're watching this, and every time something would happen, he would just be like, Pff. you know, just like, Pff. what? And I'm like, I, so I finally looked over at him. I said, what? He said, this is so fake. That lit me up like a Christmas tree. I'm like, this isn't fake, Dad. They're in there wrestling. I mean, right? This is not fake. This is the real deal. You're talking about the total package here. Lex Luger and Steen going at it. But you know what? The older I got, the more I realized that my dad was right. It was kind of fake, and um, which which there are some people maybe that still are adults that don't believe that it's fake, but I, I think the wisdom of my father has, has grown on me, and I, I do realize that it's fake. But there, there was a wrestling match um, in the Bible that I want to talk about really quick. And you, don't, you might not know this. The Bible is full of little stories like this, and I love it. So you think, you're thinking Lex Luger, you're thinking Ric Flair, the nature boy, you're thinking about Sting, all these guys. Well, let me tell you about the great, one of the greatest wrestling matches that, uh, that happened in the Bible. It was in the Old Testament. And it's actually found in Genesis chapter 32. And, and, and this match was not some 10-minute thing that with sequin pants and makeup and all that kind of stuff. This was a real match between God and Jacob, okay? And so I want to share this story with you, and I believe God wants to share some things with us out of this story. And verse 22 is where we start. This is Jacob, uh, talking about Jacob in the context. He arose that night and took his two wives his two female servants and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. So he sent them across. Then Jacob was left alone. Now, this is what God does in our life. I know because he's done it in my life. He gets us to a place where we're alone. Where we cannot depend on anyone else. Now the people in our lives will be there to support us. But it's going to be a time in your life. And I'll get into this in just a second. When we see God face to face. And He's about to do something miraculous in your life. It will only be you and Him. That's it. There's not going to be anybody else around. And he designed it that way because he wants to get the glory for what he's going to do in your life. And he will never allow someone else. Now he'll use other people, but he will get the glory. But there will be a time when you come face to face with God and it's going to be just you and him. So this is why when I read that, I, I, I thought to myself, oh, oh my gosh, you're exactly right. Jacob was left alone. And then, I love how the word just kind of casually mentions this. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Like, okay, just keep reading. What? A man wrestled with him until the breaking of day? They actually had a wrestling match that lasted all night long? Now, when he saw what, that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me the, the boldness of this guy. 
He said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, which means, for I have seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. And all I want to share with you today is just something really simple. When you go through your trials, when you go through something that doesn't seem like is fair, whether it be a situation in your family, whether it be a health issue, whether it be an addiction, whether it be anything, and it doesn't seem fair to you that this is happening to you when you're sitting there and you're saying, why me? Why is it that I'm having to struggle through this? Let me tell you what God's doing in your life. He's on the verge of blessing you. Now, you might think, oh, okay, what does that mean? When I say He's on the verge of blessing you, it doesn't mean a Corvette's going to fall out of the sky after you get done struggling with God. We in America, when we think blessing, we sometimes and most of the time think financially blessed. But let me tell you something that's so much greater than financial blessing, and that's spiritual blessing. Something far greater than gold and silver and dollars and Christmas presents is the spiritual blessing that God will put into your life right after a trial that He took you through. Just like with Jacob, they wrestled all night long. And I can remember trying to mimic this one time. When I was, I was, uh, I'd lost my job. We were up in Georgia and I had lost my job and I went down into the basement and I read this and I got fired up. Christy's up in the kitchen cooking. Zach's like two years old running around the house and not well, crawling around. One year, I don't remember how old he was, but he was little. And so I went down into the basement and I'm like, okay, I'm out of work. I've been looking for a job and I don't know what to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to the basement and I'm going to wrestle with God. That's exactly, I mean, I'm not even kidding you. That was my attitude. I was mad at God. I was mad at God because of what just happened in my life. I just got fired from a job. And I was so upset and my attitude was, I'm fixing to go down and I'm fixing to duke it out with God. Now that was a very... God, I'm so grateful for His loving kindness over me. Could you imagine wanting to go down in your basement and duke it out with God? Oh my gosh. Anyway, that's how mad I was. I was very upset at God. Okay? How many of you have ever been mad at God for something that has gone on in your life? Let me tell you something. It's okay. He's big enough to handle it. But... He's not going to leave you in that anger. He's going to begin to process things with you through this. And you're going to learn that it's not that He is trying to harm you. He is trying to bless you. And so I went down and for four hours, I mean, I couldn't do it all night. But for four hours, I was walking back and forth, back and forth. And I was reading this scripture and I was mad and I was angry and I was mad at God and I was mad at my boss for letting me go and I was and we were great friends and that friendship was ruined and blah 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 and I was going off on God and I said to God I will not let you go I said the same thing Jacob said I was mimicking this story in my life and I said I will not let you go until you bless me Well, the blessing was about to come. But the blessing, the suffering, always comes before the blessing. In other words, you're going to be left alone with God, whether it be in your basement or by the river and you're wrestling with God. And, And God's going to get you into a place where you are alone. But here's the reason why the suffering has to happen in our lives. The suffering has to happen in our life so that God can get us to a point where we'll actually hear Him.
where we'll actually listen, where we will actually understand that He is in control. As long as we're not suffering, we're in control. As long as I've got everything together and put into my little box called my life, I'm good. And so the point of the suffering is for God to slow us down and to say, child of mine, I want to bless you. But you've got to understand that the blessing has got to do more with what I want to do in your life than the suffering does. I don't, I don't like the suffering, but it's necessary in the walk of a Christian. And so whatever it is that you might be going through today, the suffering, understand that the suffering is necessary. Let me just point you to the cross for a second. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, He's crying out to His Father. Father, if it be Your will, take this cup from me. I don't want to do this. In His humanness, sweating blood, He was so disturbed and distraught. Our, seed, our Savior, our Lord and Savior, is literally in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating blood, crying, saying, God, Father, I've come to the point where it's the end and I don't want to do it. And then He says, but I will, because you've asked me to. See, Jesus always did what the Father asked Him to do. And even though the suffering was coming, He knew, Jesus knew the blessing that was coming after the suffering. He knew that after the suffering on the cross, that He was going to walk out of the grave three days later. He knew that. But He did it anyway because He knew that the blessing was on the other side. And so what we have to understand is we have to condition ourselves. And the Bible says that we, if we rejoice with Jesus, if we share in the glory of Jesus, then we also must share in His suffering. And that's something that we don't like to hear as a church or as a people. We don't like to suffer. But the suffering is necessary for the blessing. And so Jacob goes through this deal with God. And God wrenches his hip, okay? So he gives him an infirmity, something that's not going to go away. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I got a twisted sense of humor, but I can see Joseph walking away um, like just beat up and bruised and, you know, just hanging his head down. But, but he had fought God all night long. And then he says, Jacob says this, and I'll wrap up with this. He says, Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. And Peniel means, for I have seen God face to face, and my life was preserved. The suffering. This is the reason suffering comes into our life. It's because we have to get to a point where we actually see God face to face. And that's going to be in the suffering. And then he says, but the blessing is coming. The blessing is on its way. And I love when he said, I called this name Peniel. And I want you to understand something. And the reason I'm kind of focusing in on this a little bit and bringing it to a close is because... I have this scar in my, a lot of you know this, but it's from here to here. And in 1997 or 8, I had this huge, humongous open heart surgery. And more suffering. But through all of the suffering, I was beginning to see God face to face. I was beginning to become more and more and more broken before an almighty, powerful God. And I was beginning to come to a place where there was more surrender in my life. You see, that's the part of suffering that we don't like, but it's God saying, you're going to see me face to face and you're going to be alone because there's a purpose in it. The purpose is because I want to bless you. But in, before I can bless you, you will see me face to face. And when I look at this scar, I nicknamed this scar. You're like, what? What in the heck are you talking about? I nicknamed this scar Peniel. I did. You know why? Because it is the moment in my life that I saw God face to face, but my life was saved. And that was the suffering. 
and the spiritual blessing that came after it, I was closer to God. I'd never been more closer to God in my life until that moment. I had played the part. The little Sunday school boy that grew up and played the part. But it was after I saw God face to face, alone, is when the blessing of His presence overwhelmed me. And I'm going to tell you something. I would not give one million dollars or two or three. Four, no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I wouldn't give all the money in the world. You can have it. I'll take Jesus. I'll take the presence of God over gold or silver any day of the week. Blessings of God are His greatest intentions for our life. But the blessings are not what we think they are. The blessings are more of His presence in our life, closer to Him, more peace in our life, more joy in our life, more love, more grace, so we're able to give more grace out to other people. Those are the blessings of God. And so we can learn a lot from this story of this wrestling match that took place on the edge of the river. So maybe today you have a place where you met God face to face. Maybe you're thinking of that place right now. There was this defining moment, just like this story was a defining moment in the life of Jacob. There was a defining moment where you saw God face to face and He spared you. You think God, God didn't have to spare Jacob. But he spared him because he loved him. And he says, and, and, and the blessing was this. You will no longer be called Jacob. You will be called Israel. I got so much. In other words, he's saying, look, this is where you are right now. And we're going to go through some suffering here. And on the other side of that, Jacob, you will no longer be Jacob. You will be Israel. And so what I want you to understand today, church, is this. The suffering is important. The suffering and the blessing of God go hand in hand. Because He's got so much more for your life. And so much more of a purpose and a plan that you ever dreamed of. I hope you received that word today. Because it... Because I know that it touched my heart. Because I know that He opened up heaven for Jacob. And so, Father, today as we wrap this up, I feel like I've made your point, and I've heard before once I make the point of the Holy Spirit to just stop. So we just thank you for your word today. I thank you for the people here that are listening and responding to your word today, Lord. Use this to touch people. Use it to touch lives to say, yes, I receive this today. Father, I accept the suffering and I also accept the blessing. And so, Father, today we just choose you through it all. When we're by ourselves, when we're alone, when we're facing the struggles, when we're facing the doubt, when we're facing the insecurity and the failures. We just trust you. The secret ingredient to all of it is just trusting you. So we trust you in everything that we're going through. Bless us today in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week.